Hello all you adorable fluff butts out there, Kit the Soul is here, and today we're going to talk about a mentality that has been making a sort of comeback in our community where things like sex and sexuality are involved. You see, there's been an issue in our community recently with people being demonized for their kinks, whether they express them in the real world or not, and no, I'm not talking about the great taboos of sex. No, I'm talking about things like vor and body worship, which covers the argument of maws or paws or tails or what have you, as well as several other rather harmless interests. Even mersuiters have come under fire again, with people accusing them of being the cause of a majority of STDs among the furry populace. So today we're going to be talking about a few of these interests in depth, as well as the pushback they've received and why these things aren't the unfathomable evil that some people try to claim they are. So sit back, perk up those ears, and get ready for another wild ride. Now, we'll start with Vararophilia, more commonly shortened to Vor. Now, while I will say that I consider this to be the weirder of the three topics I'll be talking about today, I do know quite a few furs who are into this particular kink. Vor is an interest in either eating or being eaten by another fur, typically being swallowed whole instead of being torn apart. It can be in a show of dominance and submission where the prey is hunted down and consumed, or something more voluntary, and while it does involve an individual being consumed, it doesn't always end in the individual being digested or absorbed. While dominance and submission play a major part in this kink for some, that's not always the case. For some, it can stem from a desire to become a part of something bigger than themselves, and in some cases, it can even stem from a desire to permanently escape from loneliness. There are also various types of vor, from the typical oral vor to, well, other methods. After all, every hole's a goal, right? People often equate this to things like cannibalism as well, which is where a majority of the issue here comes from, though a vast majority of those who are interested in this kink will admit that they find the thought of actually eating another person disgusting. For them, it's something that's kept strictly in the realm of fantasy and shared through storytelling, online roleplay, and art. Now, there are also fursuits designed with this particular kink in mind, and while they are in use, it can be fairly obvious what they're for, especially if you see something like a hand moving around inside those giant bellies. Some people have tried to claim that these suits are inappropriate to wear in public settings, such as at a convention. And while I can, to a degree, understand where these people are coming from, I can't agree with the sentiment that these suits should be banned in public settings. For most people who see a suit like this, it's seen as something innocent. After all, outwardly it's just a fur with a rounder belly than normal, and personally? When I see an adorable fur with a big belly, the first thing I want is a hug, not a trip through their esophagus. Body worship is another one that just really isn't my thing, but again, I can understand it. The thing is, this particular one is both a kink by nature and insanely innocent when it comes to a majority of the fandom. This one actually runs the gambit from lewd to completely innocent with the worship of various body parts from genitals and armpits to tails, maws, paws, and even toe beans. There are entire groups of people who see this as nothing more than enjoying the aesthetic of a cute little pair of feety paws, and yet, some people believe there is a problem with this one because they see it as over-sexualizing things that aren't inherently sexual. Now, I do get it to a degree, since things like, say, cock worship, wouldn't exactly be acceptable in a public place, at least not in a western society, but other things like the paws or maws argument that's been turned into a cutesy little mock feud? 
I can understand the disdain for furs who take it too far or who seemingly center their personality around this particular form of worship, but that doesn't make the act inherently bad just because some people take it way too far. Finally, I've talked about merch suiting before. It's an interest that a lot of people within our community have, and it's as harmless as any other kink involving clothing. But for some reason, it's become the target of the same bit of attention as it typically gets. Now, for all five of you out there in our community who don't know what a merch suit is, it's a fursuit designed with sexy time in mind meaning there are holes in special places to allow for a little extra fun while it's being worn. Some people have generally complained about the hygiene issues brought up with these particular garments, as well as the false belief that these suits are the major cause of STDs spreading in our community. We'll start with the argument that MERS suiting is the major cause of STDs in our community, since it's relatively easy to debunk. You see, my dear fluffs, it's not the kink that spreads disease, but a lack of knowledge and forethought. Claiming that any kink is the cause of a disease spreading is as mindless as it was when society claimed that homosexuality was the cause of AIDS. In truth, what spreads these diseases is a critical lack of care and understanding of what it means to practice safe sex. If you want to be safe and remain clean, then getting tested, screening your partners, and wearing protection are all things you need to do. Now, on the other paw, I can see where people are coming from when it comes to the hygiene argument, but if we're going to use that mentality, then why are we wearing pants? The argument is that suits are unclean because they've touched genitalia or because they've come in contact with certain bodily fluids. The argument falls flat entirely, though, when you take into account that people wash their suits, and typically, mersuiters wash theirs more often than any other normal suit. After all, showing up to a scene with matted fur glued together with someone's day-old spunk isn't exactly attractive. Ugh. Now, for those of you who know me well, you probably already know my thoughts on these issues, but for those of you who don't, I'll go ahead and state that I think these arguments are fucking stupid. People have, for decades now, tried to demonize and vilify people for their sexual interests in this community for the sake of trying to, quote, clean up our fandom's image. And to a degree, I can empathize with those who want the world to see us for what we are, but try to understand that by demonizing people for interests that, in the long run, harm no one, you're actually doing the same thing that society has done to us for as long as our community has existed. Kink attire can be made safe to be worn in full view of the general public. The problem arises when people hypersexualize the attire itself. Much like when people used to argue that a skirt was inappropriate because it had the potential to show off too much leg. The way I see it, so long as you don't have your genitals flapping about in the breeze, I see no issue with people wearing what they want for the sake of expressing themselves. And when it comes to the people who do have a problem with it, I honestly see them no differently than I saw the members of the Burned Furs who believed that all semblance of sex and sexuality should be removed from our community by force. Now, where do you fall on this argument, I wonder? Are you okay with trying to force a more puritanical mindset onto our community? Or do you have a more live and let live attitude about what people choose to wear? Let me know in the comments below. Anyways, that's it for this rant, folks. I hope you enjoyed it, and until next time, bye bye